good morning <clears throat> and uh, thank you kavita for this very generous uh, introduction you are listening for the first time i also want to confess that i am giving this talk for the first time so so let's let's all join this uh, together but what it's going to come up is it's going to come from my personal learnings over the past 25 years and uh, for that uh it was not a planned thing but i think i should thank my father for this i i'm think i'm very uh, sure that he's going to be surprised at, as to why i'm naming him 30 years back he said this is your money this is what you would do with your money and he never interfered with that money and 4 years later i had lost 50% of what he had given me so this comes out of that experience of talking and so i think this is that much more powerful than anything else i don't think i would have the guts to hand over money like that to my children but uh, that is what the experience i had and so this has got nothing to do with the finance director position which i'm hearing it now so i, I was uh, so the finance the, the hospital can be safe because i've gone through the catastrophe already uh, this thing so let me start off uh, by saying that this is a whole day topic this is like asking dr rk or dr krishna das to talk about management of glaucoma in 20 minutes this is something like that you know the definition will go beyond 45 minutes and they they have not defined that uh, disease yet that's a different matter altogether but but anyway this is what uh, this thing is about. So we are going to compress everything in 20 minutes. So we are going to get the philosophy out of it. We are having a person who has practically lost money who is going to talk to you. So you, you have a very, very powerful uh, set of combination which is going to help you uh, understand this. The second thing is I'm assuming, I'm assuming that many of you or none of you uh, understand finance. So please pardon me if some of you know uh, more finance sometimes it may it may look very very uh, basic uh, what i'm going to talk about so these are the top financial mistakes so at the age of 20 you think you own the world you know everything and finance is the last thing in your mind at the age of 30 some responsibility sets in because i was practicing i was actually focusing this talk on the alumni i think you would be somewhere at uh, either in the second or the third version uh, of uh, age of 30, age of 40, you must be lucky that you are hearing this talk so that you don't end up like this gentleman uh, who is at the age of 50. But this is, this is the theory. You have to understand that whether you like it or not, this is the truth. And the earlier you learn it, the better it would be so that you don't go through all this dangerous uh, thing. First thing is, any go any investments should be goal based it should not be i want a lot of money it is like saying i want to be a good person it doesn't mean anything what is the meaning of a good person you are not able to define one small disease how can you be able to dis define uh, what is a, a a a good person is so it is i, I always like to have a chat at the glaucoma uh, people so <laughs> So anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a goal-based investment is what you should be really uh, having in mind. You, you should compartmentalize your brain. First thing is investment is not about science. Investment is about mindset. You can see a person, how he drives a car, and then you can decide how he's going to be a surgeon, how he's going to be an investment banker, how he's going to be a long-term planner. Very, very clear. They won't have a different kind of a thing. So you should just compartmentalize yourself first. The first thing is compartmentalizing your brain to different forms of investments and then release those kind of funds at, at that right point of time. So let me start off by first uh, telling you, personal finance, according to me, you just fundamentally differentiate between insurance and investment. Because the first point and the take-home point I want you to get away from this meeting is insurance is not an investment. 90% of the people are confused as to saying insurance is one form of investment. It is not. That is the fundamental learning 
you need to learn from this. Okay. So, insurance, there are two types of insurance, right? One is a health insurance, another is a life insurance. And in today's world, in India, all of you, before even you invest in stocks or shares or PPFs, you should have a very, very, very uh, high health insurance with you. You should have this. It was not a problem 10 years before. But we are going towards a westernized world. I would suggest that you should really, really have an insurance value of health insurance value at least for 50 lakhs, if not for one crore. Now, it will look as if I'm actually telling you it involves a lot of money. It is not. That is the point I'm trying to tell you. Don't take a policy for one crore. The insurance agent will sell a policy for you for one crore. Ask for the main on policy and the add on policy. You will save dramatically. You just take a main policy for 10 lakhs, have an add on policy for 90 lakhs. You are invested for one crore. Maybe you won't get some benefits out of it, doesn't matter. But ask your insurance agent and take this on a main policy, add on policy as a, a, a first thing. So that is about health uh, uh, insurance. Life insurance. Now, this is where I told you insurance is not an investment. See, actually, the principle is the same. I will tell the same thing in the next slide. Fundamentally, you are betting. What is life insurance? You are betting that you are going to die. The insurance company is betting that you are not going to die. That is it. So if you die, you win by money. Okay, but you lose your life. It's as simple as that. And that is what I mean. Insurance is not an investment. Okay, so this is fundamental, fundamental. I've seen many people get locked in insurance and thinking that is a return, payback, money back. All this is a total, total gimmick. What they do is they take money from you, they invest in stocks and shares. So you might as well do it uh, on your own. So who should take an insurance? You bet that you will die. The insurance company will bet bets that you live. All of you are happy because you're living. But the returns which you get is very, very negligible. If all our counselors, I think I would suggest all our counselors to give and get coached by an insurance agent. We'll be able to counsel our patients better. They are very, very adept at, at uh, counseling uh, so that you understand that. So you talked about health insurance. You talked about the main policy, add-on policy. Then the last thing you can ever do a mistake is to take an insurance policy in the name of children. That's a fundamental mistake. And I bet 95% of us take that because it's an emotional thing. When you go and buy something for your child, you tend to buy 10 times costlier than what you buy for yourself. You're thinking that I'm getting a good insurance policy for your child. When a child dies, it is not a financial loss. It is an emotional loss. See, when you are in a financial mode, you should get all, all your emotions out of your system. It's a science. So what you really need to understand is there is absolutely fundamentally uh, not the right thing to take an insurance policy for a child. Take an insurance policy for yourself. Let's say two scenarios. If you are there and uh, four of your family members are working, you don't need life insurance as much. But if you are there and you are the only person who is working, then you need a life insurance. And life insurance never, never take anything other than term insurance. The agent will not tell you term insurance. You will not like the word term insurance because term insurance is you pay a money and after one year, you don't get anything. So what you would think? I'm paying, I'm not getting anything. Again, I'm telling you, you are betting that you are going to die. The insurance company is betting that you are going to live. It's better to let the insurance company win. It makes sense to make the insurance company win. Okay. So term insurance is the cheapest form of insurance, which you should take adequately for yourself, especially if you are the person who is financially uh, this thing. But if you are having this thing, so if you are having a policy for your children, 
you made your mistake that is your learning but at least don't expand it further you can you can cheat yourself money back endowment policy that policy this policy everything you can you can take a look but i have said tell the practical part is this is a fundamental uh, truth so we finished insurance now we come to investment and before we understand investment we should understand the word inflation so what really happens why should you invest the you need to you need to insure because of the reasons which i told you need to invest because you want to uh, outlive inflation so this is something of of a thing i'll think about the tamil translation so this is about a small shop this is not a five star hotel okay the small tea shop i'll translate it for you the coffee in 1983 in that small shop was 75 paisa and very recently in that small shop it is 15 rupees and see they have now they are not painting a new board they are actually starting to put stickers so it's going to be 15 rupees now it's going to be 16 rupees 3 months from now it's going to be 17 rupees they don't waste their time redesigning their boards that is inflation that is inflation you just see pongal here in 1983 80 paisa pongal here 30 rupees ready to be changed ready to be changed so that is about inflation so don't complicate things in your mind learn everything in a very very simplistic uh, exemplified uh, manner then you understand finance better so what it really means is the rule of 72 expenses will double in 12 years now this is at 6% per year inflation initially in the us my i can take a lecture here on inflation to our us friends because us friends are listening are understanding inflation in the last one or two years our inflation rate we are really much better than in the us if you really see the uh, income parity but what fundamentally is at 6% is a given in india at 6% is an uh, inflation is given if we just think the milk is 22 will be 44 in this and 88 in this that that will be slow slow you won't understand the the change at which uh, your your money is getting eroded so i'm i'm sorry i'm not able to get the top is there any way to get the top thing uh, thing because that is where the meaning is yeah. <laughs> thank you boss yeah. so if your expenses are 40000 today same thing what does it mean at 6% inflation at 10 years your expense would be 70000 without changing your lifestyle without changing your lifestyle this is what your change would be this is a ticking time bomb there at 15 years it's 95000 and at 25 years it's 170000 same 40 same 40000 today so this is what the inflation will do for your expenses and what will it do for your income so we talked about the expenses we talked about the income in 10 years the value would be 30000 and in 15 years it's 20000 and in 25 years is at 12000 so you understand the power of inflation right and this thing is not in your hands this thing is not in your hands if there's going to be a war in between russia and uh, ukraine and if the oil prices are going to increase your inflation is going to be 8% for that year it's as simple as that it is not in your hands you don't have any role to play the presidents of russia and ukraine can decide on your future so this is the truth so you need to be very very clear on this so you talk you understood the concepts about inflation and so only these are the four things i'm going to talk about the investment the first and fundamental thing here is what we call as the ppf and this is the last remaining eee in the country there used to be a lot of eee in the country what do we mean the eee when you put a when you put an investment there is an interest accrual and there is an exemption then when you take money the final product comes in everything is exempt from tax we used to have a lot of this thing before but now the only true instrument which we have uh, again is this model and again i should thank uh, my father here i'm sure he's going to be embarrassed but uh, he is the person who really 
started this when nobody else was knowing about this 40 years before in very, very small measures. And I've got the old passbook in which I see how it had changed from 500 rupees and how it gets multiplied. You will not understand the power of compounding unless you really allow time to compound your money uh, for yourself. So the main disadvantage people tout about is if you put money in this, you can't take it out for 15 years. But I think that is the main advantage. It is not the main disadvantage. The main advantage is that you will not be able to take the money out for 15 years and you allow it to compound it. It is tax free. There is no instrument like this in the US, which is completely tax free, which is actually secured by the government of India. And more importantly, more importantly, if you are bankrupt, they cannot attach this. They cannot attach this. You know, you can swindle all the banks, but still uh, they cannot attach uh, your PPF. So in that way, it's really a, a, a safety marker for this. So I told you about the earlier, my earlier life, and I really don't, I still do stocks, but I don't think you should all do stocks unnecessarily. Uh, it, it's a complex game uh, altogether. And now it's become with puts and options and derivatives. It's become all that more dangerous and powerful to do it. But just go only for mutual funds at this point of time. So that should go only after you finish your health insurance, your life insurance, and your PPF of 1.5 lakhs for each and every person. If you are not able to fill that up, don't go for this business. So that would be my advice. So just look at all this and get an idea. There are two fundamentally two different types of mutual funds. One is an equity fund. The other is a debt fund. And then what the best form of investing is just to put it in SIP, the, the systemic investment planning. And I'll just tell you this thing. What is an SIP? You just put everything in a bank and then you give a commitment by saying a standard amount of money will flow into equity or debt stocks in a pre-planned interval. Okay, so that part, it takes the uh, stress out of you. And now the way when I started investment at 25 years back and the way investments are now, it's much more sophisticated. It is much more, you can, you can have all the strengths in the world. And I only want to warn you, it's much more dangerous now than what it was 25 years back. Don't try your tricks. Don't try your uh, skills there. Be as bored as possible. You should, you should be as bored as possible with regard to investing. A surgeon who is just doing the same surgery again and again and again, getting bored with this thing will be a fantastic investor. <laughs> a surgeon who wants to learn new skills every day, wants to do FECO uh, by lying down from this side and getting this, is not going to be a good investor. Ideally, that fellow should not invest money. So this is the fundamental uh, difference with regard to this. I'm saying, again, I'm saying investing is about mindset. It is not about your intelligence at all. It's about your mindset. So a low time. There's a famous saying that you can't have a child by making nine people pregnant and getting a child in one month. You must allow time for it to develop. You know, you must really allow uh, time to do the tricks. And when you do time to do the tricks in a good instrument with a good mindset, the only way is up. The only way is up. So that is the thing. But take it from me, 99% of these people in this audience is not going to do what I'm telling because that is what is the statistic. That is, that is, what, is, the, that is what is the real statistics because we all think that we know. But ideally, you should lose 50% of your money to know the to know, to know uh, a good uh, knowledge part of uh, what is this thing. I think my father also is, is understanding for the first time that I lost 50% of the money in, 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 in four years. So this is the power of compounding. This is just one table you need to, if you want to take one table from this, if you start at the age of 25 years and you invest 1000 rupee per month, this is what you will end up at the age of 60, 23 lakhs. If you start investing at the age of 40 years, 1000 rupee per month, this is what you will get 
5.92 lakhs. Having invested 2.4 lakhs, you will get only 5.92 lakhs. This is where the trouble comes. You put for five years and you expect fabulous returns, you will not get it. According to me, your, your time is gone. Your time is gone. Try to do it with your children. I, have do, I do that whenever uh, RK sir knows it. Whenever I start giving presents uh, to children, I usually give them a PPF account. I make them just give a PPF account uh, and then allow that. And one of the anesthetist uh, of my friends, uh, he proudly shows uh, an amount of one crore for both his children because I just put 10,000, 10,000 in his, this thing when the children were born. And then he had the discipline to, to sort of multiply it over a period of time. So what is this, this slide say? Start early. I, I, it was a joke when I said your time is gone, but that was a powerful message to start as quickly as possible and allow time uh, to compound. This gentleman also lost a lot of money. Very big intelligent people lose money especially in stock market, very intelligent people uh, die bankrupt because they think they can use their intelligence. This is not about intelligence. This is about common sense. And intelligence is different from common sense. That is a fundamental uh, learning you need to also understand. That is, these two are two, two different things. So he made the statement, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I don't understand it. He doesn't understand it. So that is, that is the power of uh, uh, investment. So to the finishing part, the debt mutual funds, here you measure things in duration. It is not about small cap, mid cap, large cap, multi cap or flexi cap. This is about duration. Don't bother too much about this. Uh, you should bother about this when you're 60, not now. Don't bother about this, but you just need to understand that there is a group of instruments which you can use it to sort of foreshorten your, I mean, calculate your risk. The fundamental thing is 100 minus your age should be in equity. So if you are 20, 80% of your money to be in equity. If you are 80, 20% of your money in equity. These are the fundamental things which you need to understand in personal finance. Okay, so just like how you teach, you, you have to teach things uh, very, very simply so that you, you, you understand this. At this point of time, 100 minus 30, you should be uh, in the other forms of things. So what is the, they, people ask me, what is the formula? If you want a risk time formula, go for an equity scheme at 40%, uh, a hybrid scheme at 10%, uh, a debt scheme at 40%, and a liquid scheme for 10%. This is I kept this slide, this slide will change, but I kept this slide for a 40 year old person. This slide changes, but then the fundamental principles, you do this after you finish your insurance and don't confuse insurance with investments. So I also want to have a caveat. Sometimes it's very easy advising, very difficult to follow. I don't follow this advice, but uh, usually you don't need to have more than a house, one house. But it all depends on uh, this thing. You know, it's just like the David Chang talking about uh, uh, cataract surgery. Uh, he, when he talks about, uh, he's a brilliant surgeon, he talks about cataract surgery. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have his own PCR. He has his own PCR and he just has to know, he just has to understand. He'll have a better way of managing his PCR. So that is where uh, this thing is. Suppose if you have surplus money, you can think about it, but usually don't confuse a house with an investment. But it's again an important thing for a social prestige to show your in-laws that you have arrived, to show your wife that you have arrived. Fundamentally, you can be an expert throughout your throughout the world, but most difficult to convince your own family that you are one of the uh, top uh, knowledge uh, earners in this. Gold, I don't, so many women here, not a great investment. I can shout my way out of it, but people will not listen to it. So don't bother. Keep your spouses happy, buy them the gold they want, but don't think of it as an investment. Think of it just like an expenditure. Okay, to cost of keeping your spouse happy. So everything has a definition. Insurance has a definition. Gold has a definition. And uh, this thing. So, so all these things, you just uh, keep this in mind. 
you know you can say you know pound and in tamil they say naanga chinna vayasula irukkappa pound if you calculate everything it doesn't boil down to that kind of a thing if you know how to make returns of it and finally asset allocation i just have three slides so fundamentally you just have to decide don't put your eggs in one basket you understand this you can't eat all sweets you can't eat all rice you can't eat all pickles you should have your instruments you should have your investments in in many uh, asset class and finally finally don't do what my father did this is my advice for this generation and i've been constantly telling to people be careful about your money before bequeathing it to your children never do it never do it ultimately nominate them so that they get their money after your death i have had many stories told to me by many of the this thing never never take this risk uh, of uh, trying and uh, trusting your children and giving them the money so i am not keeping anything within me this is my personal thing it's an alumni thing and so i just wanted to uh, say and also it's a reason why i will not do what my father did uh, for my own uh, children in in a different sense so but nomination is very important and in today's world registration is very important you can have all the thoughts in your world but unless you register something you nominate something there is going to be a dispute between your children and all your hard earned money will 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 somehow this thing see all the time it's very nice to think that our children will not fight over money but then if given an opportunity if given an opportunity everybody has a price so i'm taking my financial position and playing this here i'm not putting an emotional position this thing 1 lakh doesn't tempt me 100 crores tempt me so it all depends on that kind of a thing so be careful about the nomination part of it my final of the two slides so this is wrong income minus expenses savings the discipline should come the expenses should be done only after the saving system a person who is able to uh, ex- expand actually when i became the finance director i just listened the only thing i, I listened was the advice given by my grandmother who did not have any money she was a very big influence on me she used to say in in translational thing you can never become rich by making more money you can be, never become rich by making more money you can only become rich by spending less so that is one of the uh, thing with the fundamental principles you need to understand and this is my last slide and this is what i said 95% of the people here would feel that i gave a nice talk but you will not follow uh, what i advise if everybody followed then nobody else can make money so it, that is how that is how, that, that that's how world is and enjoy the path of investing okay